really, if you want to change something, you have to constantly do it, which is the hardest thing because your mind is already hard, hardwired to the point where the way that you're thinking right now is the way that you're going to be thinking. Mm -hmm. So if your mind is constantly thinking positive thoughts, your your mind's going to continue to keep thinking positive thoughts, which is basically a upward spiral, and you're going to be like, "Whoa, I'm like such a positive person," and it's just going to affect everything in life. But one thing that that I learned, and this was like long, long time ago. This is probably when I was a kid, and I was trying to. I think that's when I got into self development a little bit. I started reading a couple of books, and I was like, "Oh, this stuff is pretty cool." But I used to be actually negative back in the day. I used to like put myself down and my. Hi, Jonathan Garcia. Thank you so much for being on my podcast. I've been looking forward to talking to you for a while, and since I tap into the personal、uh, development space, I think you are definitely one of the greatest people in my network. I admire you. I look up to you. I think you have put out a ton of great content on your social media platforms. And you have inspired me to become a better version of myself. So first of all, thank you, thank you so much for being in my network. And today I have the opportunity to interview you and talk about some of our favorite topics, such as personal growth, personal development. Appreciate you being here and sharing your insights with my audience. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. Honestly, this is gonna be an amazing conversation. Honestly, every time we talk to each other, it's always like value all the time. Yeah. But with us both having like growth mindsets, kind of thing, it's like we just feed off each other, and we're like constantly pushing each other and motivating each other to just be better than yesterday, kind of thing. Absolutely. And I know one of your mantras is you know how to elevate greatness. Right, and I think that really aligns with my personal development, personal growth. So let's maybe dive into that a little bit.、Um, what does success mean to you, and how did you even tap into the personal development space? So success for me, it's it's a lot. It's a culmination of a lot of things. But as you said, one of my models is elevate greatness, which basically means be better than yesterday or try to be better than yesterday. It's always like trying to improve yourself and reach your your potential. So when it comes to success, it's really about what your definition of success is. It's what you want and what you want to achieve in life. Which you, it's it's about basically having those values and understanding, like what are the things that are gonna allow me to basically live the values that I I want to live. So one of the biggest values for me is growth, or trying to be better than yesterday, and trying to grow and trying to improve in everything that I do, whether it's running, whether it's investing, whether it's basically、um, having like a social network and connecting with people. It's it's really finding what really drives you and trying to strive for that. And even if it's even if you're like setting up goals and you fail at them. It's it's not really failure. It's more a stepping stone to get to where you want to be. As long as you become persistent and just keep trying to pursue your dreams. I love that. I love that. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit because failure is a very interesting topic.、Um, I mean, for me personally, I had dealt with anxiety for a long time because like I couldn't even face the reality of like, oh, I felt this, I felt that. I mean. Interpretation around failure is something that I've learned out of the personal growth development, if you will. And so let let's just help the audience understand this a little bit better, right? I think you were saying that failure is part of the growth journey. I mean, if you want to achieve your goal, I mean, failure is definitely part of the journey that you cannot avoid. But what's your attitude around it, though? See, when it comes to failure, it's it's like mindset. It's really looking at it more in a positive light than it is a negative light, because when you look at it in a negative light, basically that's gonna take away your motivation, take away that drive to keep going forward. But if you look at failure more as a learning opportunity, that that's really the biggest takeaway when it comes to trying to keep moving forward and trying to be better than yesterday, kind of thing. But it it is a mindset you want to try. 
to find a way to make it a make a negative or not even look at it as a negative but turn that into a positive so for example uh there was one of my races i remember this is like a while back when i started but i ran this like 5k race and i lost a third place medal by like 0.4 seconds like oh. literally this and it was like so heartbreaking because at least like i could do like one sharper turn or i could have spent a little bit more and it's just like damn <laughs> did not see that coming so what ended up happening was i remember leaving that race this was at the zoo so there was a, a gift shop so i ended up buying a a little like panda toy because the metal actually that we got was a panda but it was kind of more like to remind me okay yo this is what happened like you lost by 0 0.4 seconds and damn you could have you could have gotten the medal like a, a each category medal actually i have it right here so i got this like little panda to remind me of like what happened but the way that i saw that was like this is going to be like motivation for me to get better and like for me one of the biggest mistakes or one of the things that i could have changed in that race was i should have started more closer to the front because i am more of a faster runner and what happened was it was like i just needed i just needed to like be a little bit more forward instead of having to like zigzag through and that would have saved me a little bit more but what happened was that whole year i was like motivated and reminded like yo this is what happened like you're going to come back stronger next year and i ended up coming first in my age category the next year after <laughs> wow that's very inspiring i love that story and i know you have a lot of interactions with gary v tom pu you know evan carmichael you know like those like gurus that I also look up to. Um, what are some of the learnings or maybe takeaways that you would like to share with the, my audience? Honestly, that we could we could spend like hours talking about that because there's so much that I've learned from everybody. But yeah, there's there's a lot of things that you could take away. But I think one of the biggest things is it's something called success leaves clues. So success leaves clues basically means watch people that are sex successful in doing what you're doing and see what they're doing because they're leaving a trail to tell you this is how you get to where where you want to be so if you want to be like a faster runner for example mm -hmm. you have to find somebody that's actually really fast at running pick their minds you want to try to basically mold your like training based on their training you're kind of like being a copycat and you're like, okay, this is how you got there. How do I get there too? It's it's basically following following people. But I mean, when we're talking about Tom Bilyeu and we're talking about Gary V, when we're talking about Evan Carmichael, like they all have their own different types of lessons. Like with Gary, it's always about like being grateful for the things that you have and having perspective on the things that are there for you and when it comes to being grateful for the things that you have it's basically telling your mind like i have so much abundance here this is this is like amazing and what happens is when you have abundance it leads to even more abundance but gary has like so many other lessons when it comes to that evan carmichael for example is always talking about like your your one value your one word and at least with me i always tell him like my one my one word or one my one value is like elevate because elevate greatness is two words but it's again trying to be better than yesterday trying to get better at the things that i do whatever i put my mind to and then tom billy tom billy has a lot too <laughs> but one one key lesson that i i learned from him instead of putting your self esteem with the goal or like achieving the goal it's about putting that self-esteem more into the learning process to move towards that goal. And it's kind of more related to like failure and looking that more as a learning opportunity than it is a setback. When it comes to like doing, I mean, sometimes that could be another version of growth, right? And I feel like a lot of people who are also going through the personal growth journey, they are trying so hard to learn and absorb all the content, but at the same time, 
how do you really translate what you learn to the real world? That's another layer of understanding, another layer of doing, right? Yeah. So how do you really integrate that into, you know, the what you learn and what you bring out to the world? Like, how do you integrate that into your life? Because I've been following you for quite some time. And like I said, I really admire you. I look up to you because I think it's really important to be able to bring out the integration of you like to the world, not only just like, oh, this is what I learned, but then also like, this is how I help the community to become better, right? So, and I think you have been a, a leader, like, you know, showing and demonstrating, right? And giving back the community. And um, how do you actually do that? So it's, it's a lot. So when it comes to learning, that's more trying to develop that mindset mindset is a big thing and that's the first step to kind of get to where you want to be but when it comes to learning or achieving your goals actually it's it is that action because if you don't take action whatever you learn it's a waste of time it's a waste of resources and energy to try to learn something if you're not going to put it into action but when it comes to action like before that you really need to know what you want and how you're going to get there and once you figure those two things out, that's when things start to get a little bit more easier for you to like find the path. But when it comes to like planning and following that path, that path is not always like straight. It's always like zigzag and you're never going to really, um, there's always going to be obstacles in the way. But that's kind of the things that you have to keep overcoming because for you to get from point A to point B, it's, it's about going through that obstacle and constantly moving forward into that direction. But when it comes to learning, again, learning and moving that into action, it's really about using what you learned and trying to find a way to make those actionable steps. And once you make that clear, for example, let's talk about running again, but one of one of the biggest tips that I learned with running is don't like 80% of your running should be aerobic. Basically, mm -hmm. when you're running, you should be especially when you're talking about training for a marathon or long distance running, you want to be running at a pace where you could talk to somebody. You want to be running where it's it's like you're not getting tired, but you're you're constantly running to basically try to get distance and the more you do that the more longer you can go and then in turn that's also going to make you faster when it comes to racing and uh your training runs become even better but if basically once you learn that it's like okay how can i incorporate that into my practice and if my goal is to run a marathon which i've had in the past and i'm telling you marathons are like the craziest thing in the world but when it comes to marathon, you really need to know like what your what your plan is because when you're training, you're literally going up, you're ramping your training up, you're like increasing the mileage all the time, and it'll get to a peak. Then you have to start tapering down to the point uh, until you get into race day where you're basically getting ready to put out your heart and soul into that like one run. Wow. Okay. So I have not done marathon yet. So let's say you're helping me to prepare for my yeah. upcoming marathon It's happening in nine months. You know, <laughs> what do I need to do right now, Jonathan, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually, maybe even, um, what would you tell people who are actually like having that kind of big goal? See, so it's, it's a long process. I mean, before I ran my marathon, I think it probably took me two years before I actually did it. And the year that I was supposed to do it, I'm sorry, the year that I did it, I wasn't really 100% that I was going to do it. It was like the last month, I'm like, I think my training is going well. I'm going to do it, right? And when I actually ran the marathon, it was like I was doing so well the first two and a half hours or two hours. And then it was like, oh, one part of my leg pulled and then the next leg pulled and then everything, it got to the point where I was having so much trouble like moving my feet forward. And I'm like, you know what happened? So 
when I was on that marathon, I was literally, so what happens is you have to go from downtown to like one end of the city and then back downtown and then to the other end of the city and then back. So around 25 kilometers, I remember lying down on the grass because I was in so much pain. And this has like never happened to me where I pulled my leg, but I was there like I could literally go back home and then just leave in, or go forward. So I ended up choosing to keep moving forward, which was like best decision of my life. But when you're in that position, especially when it comes to mentality, you're not thinking properly. You're like, I need I need food. I need to like drink. I need to like rest. <laughs> I just want to lay down here. But it's, it's about like constantly moving forward when it comes when we talk about like mentality. But with training, especially when you're trying to get into training for a marathon, you have to really assess yourself with how long you can run for mm -hmm. because it is a gradual, it is a gradual process. So when you're trying to run a marathon, it's like, can I run 5K first at a slow pace and then build it up to 10K and then build it up to like 15K, then to half marathon and then work your way up. So even if you, if I gave you nine months, it's kind of like you have to constantly reassess and see like, am I ready to like run or can I go to the next level when it comes to distance? Because in a marathon, especially when it's your first time, who cares about the time? If you finish, it's the greatest feeling in the world. Like I was on a high for like a couple days and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> and it, it's really, it's really good for your like mindset to be like, wow, only like 1% of people can actually do this or even less than that. I don't really know what the statistic is, but there's not a lot of people that can do what you do if you do it. Absolutely. But it's it's always about having a plan and adjusting that plan along the way. So for you especially, it's like start running slow, start with like smaller distances first, and then see how much you can go, do and start to build up uh when it comes to marathon running though the one biggest mistake that i did in my first time running was running a marathon before the marathon so one of my training runs because i wanted confidence in myself was like i'm gonna run a marathon well actually it wasn't planned but it was like i ran 30 35k and i was like at 35k and i'm like i might as well finish the other seven seven k to just get a marathon done i ended up doing 43k but those last 7K, I was like in so much pain. My knees were not properly working. And what happened was that knee pain led to ankle pain. Oh. And it was just, it was a lot harder for my training to like continue. And I think I was actually running a little bit um, injured when I ran that marathon. But when you're, when you're running, you're like, you don't think. <laughs> you're just like, let's go. The mentality when it comes to running and when it comes to even life, it's like, what's the next step that I could take? One step mm -hmm. at a time. Just keep moving forward. And that's that's how you're going to get there. Wow. I love that. Yeah, that's what Oprah Winfrey had talked about a lot too. Always yeah. think about how to prepare for the next step. Don't think, you don't have to think about 10 steps, you know, like down the road. Just think about what's the next step and prepare. Yeah, just look, for at, the next step. look at what's in front of you because yeah. that's all you can really focus on. What's at the end is at the end. As long as you're moving forward to that goal, that that's really all that matters. Okay. So, okay. I haven't finished with the marathon topic because <laughs> I am a runner too, especially now I'm in Florida. Yeah. Every single day I go out for a run. And to your point, I trying to push myself. It's like, hey, Emily, just, you know, stay focused. Just focus on what's in front of you and incremental, right? Always gain the trying to work on the incremental gains right but here's the thing you're right like there's so many times i was just like i'm thirsty i'm hungry you know yeah. like <laughs> so many complaints like do 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 you know but i, I, I mean in my mind is strong i trying to like push right but at the same time like how do you block out that noise it's hard it's hard to block it out even though you like my mind tells me that I can do it, I can run like two more miles, I can keep going. But how do you See, usually do that? That that is one of the hardest questions, especially when you get to the point where it's like you're hitting your break break point. You're like, oh man, how how can I get like keep moving and my legs are not like overturning, turning and whatnot. 
it, it is a mentality and it's something that you learned. It's it's really tough because you're reminding me of uh, what happened when I was doing my first 100K bike ride. So what happened was, and the funny thing is I've done a 70K bike ride before this bike ride. So I was like, just 30K more, I could totally do that. So it was one of my my best friend's last day, like here in Toronto, he was moving out to uh, a little bit farther away. So we were like, we got, we got to do some special stuff. So he ended up doing like a 110 K run the week before or two weeks before actually. So I was actually a part of his journey for doing his first 110 K. Uh, and this is running. So that's like ultra marathon running. But then it was like, Two weeks later, it's like, okay, this is we're close to like the day that you're gonna leave. We're gonna do a hundred K. Like I'm I'm gonna do it. Like this is gonna be my first time doing it. So what ended up happening was we had no choice. So it had to be that day. Turns out that day was a heat warning in the news, and like you'll get like notifications on your phone. It's like it's dangerous to be outside in the heat. We ended up still going. We went all the way from downtown Toronto to like Oakville, which is about 50k and then 50k back and i think we did like 106 kilometers altogether but when it got to 40 to 60k it was like i've never been so negative in my life i'm there like what the heck i'm i'm like we're we're not safe here we're so far away the cn tower literally like a tiny little dot from like far away you, you can barely see it and i'm like i don't i don't think this is safe and i don't I don't know how to get back home. <laughs> and we actually got lost too. Our GPS wasn't working. It was like all of the things imaginable. Like we ran out of water. It was like, where's the gas station? There's no gas station around. Oh my goodness. Uh, we were drinking so much because it was so hot. And this is not something that, and oh, the other thing is my friend. So my friend that did the 110K run, he is like a more, uh, he has more endurance or like more um he's able to go a lot a lot faster so sometimes i would lose him on the trail and i'm like dude wait for me <laughs> with my legs my legs were not like moving and i'm like gotta move but uh once we got to a gas station and we were, when they were able to like actually get like gatorade and drinks and that kind of stuff then things start to get better it was still hard but it was like you got to keep moving just just a little bit at a time keep going that's the that's the thing when it comes to like those negative thoughts but i don't know have you heard of jesse itzler yeah all right so jesse itzler he actually talked at vcon which is the conference that they went to a couple months ago this is related to gary vaynerchuk yep i saw that video yeah so he was talking about something about when you speak it you make it reality so it's even though it's up here it, it is it is not good to have up here, but it's hard to, it's like automatic negative thoughts. You can't, you can't stop it. All you can do is take it and look at it and be like, okay, I know that I'm thinking that, but like, I need to change that mentality. But what I started doing and like after uh VCon and it, this actually works, which is funny. It's like, you're you're like running and you're trying to like keep going forward and you're trying to keep moving and it gets to the point where your like legs are tired and whatnot your your mind is like i you have oh, sorry what you have to say is like i feel amazing like how do you feel like i feel amazing. good yeah exactly and when you say that especially if you say it enough times your mind actually just changes the way that it thinks and you forget like oh wait i feel good <laughs> But your mind and the things that you say really make a difference with how how your body reacts and how basically the actions that you take. Because if you have that positive attitude, it'll lead to more positive positive thinking. Mm -hmm. There's a saying or there's a idea of thoughts. So thoughts attract like thoughts. So if you're thinking positive, you're going to attract more positive thinking. If you're thinking negative, it's going to be the opposite. And that's the way that you kind of have to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. This message has been so strong lately. Um, just, you know, I feel like every month I'm going through some sort of transformation. And I think that's why I've been listening from the universe 
Um, I'm really big into the energy and high frequency and that type of thing. And and yeah, you're absolutely right. I feel like that's what I've been working on lately. It's just like how to embrace that positive mindset, how to, you know, block out the noise and kick out all the negative thoughts and um, open up your mind to the broader horizons. Like that helps a lot too. When it comes to positive thinking, it's a habit. Yeah. It's so a habit. it's really... If you want to change something, you have to constantly do it, which is the hardest thing because your mind is already hard, hardwired to the point where the way that you're thinking right now is the way that you're going to be thinking. Mm -hmm. so if your mind is constantly thinking positive thoughts, your, your mind's going to continue to keep thinking positive thoughts, which is basically a upward spiral. And you're going to be like, whoa, I'm like such a positive person. And it's just going to affect everything in life. But one thing that, that I learned, and this was like long, long time ago. This is probably when I was a kid and I was trying to, I think that's when I got into self-development a little bit. I started reading a couple of books and I was like, oh, this stuff is pretty cool. But I used to be actually negative back in the day. I used to like put myself down and my self-esteem wasn't like the best. I used to like wear glasses all the time and was kind of like the nerd. But at the same time, I kind of drew like self-esteem for being like, one of the smart ones, you know, <laughs> but there were times where I'll like walk around and I'm like putting myself down. And then it's like, you just have to recognize that you're doing it. And that's like the first step of being able to change because once you recognize like, okay, wait, there's a negative thought that's in my mind, try to change it one, one thought at a time. And if you fail at doing that, that's okay. You just try to keep recognizing the next time and then the next time and then hopefully that'll start giving you some momentum to just keep keep getting more positive positive. and this is the same with running as well and anything in life but like my my break point is probably a lot different than other people's break points because when i'm running like half a marathon and i still have like a little bit more to go it's it's kind of like feel good and then it's like oh no my mind is starting to like drift off a little bit but for some people it's more it could be at like that 5k mark or even less than that it's like some people don't even run and it's like they're already thinking negative thoughts to even get started you know yeah yeah so true well but it's like building up and just trying to keep betting getting better than yesterday it's it's like my motto elevate greatness <laughs> elevate greatness and then take it one step at a time and yeah focus yeah, exactly. on the world yeah I love that. Um, so I know you've been reading a lot of books and I, I know you share with your, your audience on social media and what are some of the books that you would like to recommend? Oh, that's a hard question. I have to go through like my Goodreads. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's so many. There's so many, exactly. So one that I always say is like Evan Carmichael's book, One Word. So it's it's really all about trying to find that one value, to uh, that one value that drives you. But like for me, it's kind of like I have a I wrote down all my values or like a bunch of values that are meaningful to me. But you need to be clear on that because if you understand what your values are, then you kind of know like this is the direction that I want to take when it comes to my life and how I want to live it, like. A lot of like some of my values, it is that growth. It's that positivity. Uh, it's happiness. Like a lot of the decisions that they make are the, are things that make me happy. And gratitude is another one. But it's it's kind of knowing what what really drives you. And once you understand that, that that's kind of like what you want to go to. Once you know what your goal is and you could find the habits that lead you to that goal that that's really all that matters love it so before i ask the last question where people can find you on social media so for me uh i'm on instagram and twitter the username is it's jn garcia i-t-s-j-n-g-a-r-c-i-a -A. those are my main uh social media networks you guys can always message me i, I have I love talking, so <laughs> especially when it comes to like self development and uh, running and that kind of stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, you've been a great resource 
to me. Seriously, I'm so grateful for you. And you, you always, you know, there to support. And I know you share a lot of love with your community too. Um, but let me ask you this, maybe a serious question or maybe not. So what <laughs> impact do you want to have on the world? So for me, it's, it's, it is related to Elevate Greatness too. Like it's not just to be better than yesterday for myself. It's to bring up the people around me. So what I realize is the things that I've learned and the things that I've been able to develop over, I guess, the span of my life, it's like, I wish everyone knew about it. Like the people that are trying to get to where they want to be, it's like, I kind of feel like I have an idea and I'm, I'm figuring it out myself, but I'm making steps forward and the people that aren't really searching for what they're looking for or searching to find the things that'll help them get to where they want to be. Those people are already setting themselves up for failure, but it's like, I want to see people succeed and, and achieve the things that they, uh, that they put their, their minds to. Like being able to, like, for example, see my friend complete like 110K, like it makes me so happy for them. And it's like, maybe one day that's going to be, it's going to be my turn kind of thing. Or like doing our like 100K bike ride. It was like with that same friend too. It was like, damn, like this is, this is amazing that we were able to like share that moment together. And yeah, I mean, I just like seeing people succeed. And I think that's the, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, and you're so genuine about it. That's why you have, I don't know, a million friends. I, I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's true. I, I, I see it. I, I know you, how good you are to your friends, to the community, and um, and people can feel the energy, right? It's, it's yeah. there for sure. And um, so I, before I let you go, um, any last words that you want to share or anything that you're working on that you're super passionate about? Or I know we haven't even talked about, you know, long-term investment or even, you know, you being a registered nurse, um, just anything you want to touch on. Yeah, we could definitely, maybe if we do this again another time, we could totally yeah, talk about long -term. To. But uh, again, I think the biggest thing, uh, at least the biggest takeaway take that I could give you guys, elevate greatness, like, try to be better than yesterday you always want to strive for that like life is long like the the day to days it's it's just that short term but if you look into things the long term and keep trying to push to be better than who you are there's so much value that you can accrue over that span and the person that you are right now to the person you are in one year to the person that you are in five years the person that you are in 10 years, it's going to be a different person. And if you continue to have that mindset to try to be better than yesterday, that person in 10 years is going to be like, wait, that that's me. And you'll be like, yeah, that's you. <laughs> well said. It's all about getting better. And it's, it's all about learning and trying to have that growth mindset and always trying to strive to be better than yesterday. Yes. Always. <laughs> Yes, you sum it all up. And if you're not growing, you're dying. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but hey, Jonathan Garcia, thank you so much. Thanks, joining. Emily. That was fun. <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, thanks everyone for joining another episode of Emily Leadership Podcast. Let's dream big and we can always make things happen. See you next time. Peace. <laughs>